Hello friends, this video on life processes part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we ended our discussion on nutrition which was the first life process. So now we will start with respiration. So we all know what are we going to study in respiration, how the absorbed food is converted into energy. So now we see that there are so many activities, for example, digestion, which take place inside our body. So, and in order to perform all these activities, energy is needed. So from where does this energy come from? The energy comes from food, which we eat. So we already saw that this food got digested. Where was the food digested? It was digested partly in stomach and partly in the small intestine. We also saw that the food got well absorbed. Where was it absorbed? It was absorbed in the ileum and jejunum of small intestine. Right? The absorbed food was then assimilated as well. Assimilated means the, the food's energy was stored in the assimilated molecules. That means the assimilated molecules hold the energy so till this point we have already talked about in nutrition right now the question is how is this energy released so that we can utilize this energy for various activities because till now we only see that there are some molecules which hold energy that means the food which is digested and absorbed is now present in some molecules but how do we free that energy so that that energy can be used for other purposes so how are we going to get that energy release so that is what we are going to talk about in respiration so the question is how so now the question is how this energy is released so this is what we are going to talk about in respiration. So respiration says that this energy is released by oxidation of the assimilated molecules. So what does respiration say? That the energy is released by oxidation of the assimilated molecules. So now how oxidation will take place? So for oxidation of these molecules, we, we will need oxygen. So how do we get that oxygen? Now oxygen is present in the atmosphere that we all know, right? There is 21% of oxygen present in the atmosphere. So for that, we need to take that oxygen from the atmosphere. So respiration will talk about this exchange of gases like the way for photosynthesis plants needed carbon dioxide. Similarly, for respiration, animals need oxygen. So the oxygen has to be taken in from the atmosphere, right? So this respiration will talk about the oxidation of food to produce energy. And it will also talk about how do organisms obtain oxygen from external environment. Now, this phenomenon of respiration happens not only in case of animals, but in plants. In fact, it happens in all living organisms. Right? So, here we will now talk about the process of respiration. So, what happens in respiration? As I mentioned, oxidation of assimilated molecules releases their bond energy because still the process of once the food is absorbed, their energy is stored inside molecules. So their energy is stored as the bond energy of the molecules. So we want to free that energy. We want that energy to get released. So what happens? Oxidation of the assimilated molecules. What are the, these assimilated molecules? They are nothing but the simple food particles because the complex food was converted into the most simple form. So simplest form of food would mean glucose. So this glucose will be oxidized. And this oxidation of glucose, this glucose is nothing but the assimilated molecules. So this glucose in presence of oxygen will give carbon dioxide plus water plus 
energy and this energy is what we are looking at so this energy is actually the energy which will be the released energy or which will be utilized for the various activities happening inside the body now this glucose is not only in the form of exact glucose glucose or any other food materials which provide materials needed to create glucose for example when we take sweet foods they pro they are a rich source of glucose themselves the sweet foods while other foods provide materials which are needed to create glucose so end of the day when those complex food materials get converted into simpler and simpler forms at the end we receive some simple thing like glucose so this simplest form will get oxidized in presence of oxygen and it will form carbon dioxide water and energy so this carbon dioxide will then be released out because again this carbon dioxide is a by product of respiration i mean it is something which we don't want it so we will release it so the carbon dioxide is released out and this energy how is this released energy stored this energy is stored as atp what is atp atp stands for adenosine triphosphate it, the molecule looks like this it is adenosine triphosphate so this is the adenosine group and this is triphosphate you see there are three phosphate groups one two and three right so this is adenosine triphosphate now the question is now you must be wondering what is this adenosine triphosphate or atp now the energy which is released there has to be some way to keep that energy in store for example i'll give you a scenario let us suppose you need money for various stuffs for example sometimes you need money to buy a pencil sometimes you need money to buy notebooks sometimes you need money to buy some food items right so from where do you get that money so you ask your dad to give you some money so what he does he gives you rupees 100 daily for your expenses right so what is that 100 that 100 is a denomination or this 100 is a currency so every day he keeps giving you 100 and you keep spending according to your own needs you know sometimes if let us suppose that you suddenly got too much of expenses so maybe that 100 is not enough so you ask your dad that give me some more money so maybe he will give you 200 or 300 so as you keep asking he keeps giving you so what is your dad he is actually the reservoir or he is actually the store of money and what is this 100 this 100 is nothing but a kind of currency so every time you ask money he gives you another 100 it is something like that so the more money you need the more number of 100 rupee note you get correct so similarly here also the amount of energy which is released it is stored as atp molecules so whenever the cells need energy now who will use this energy this energy will actually be utilized by the cells of the body because cells are the ones who are performing the various functions of the body all the metabolic activities now each cell needs energy to perform various activities now whenever a cell needs energy atp molecule is provided to them let us suppose if a cell says that i need more energy some emergency has come then more number of atp molecules are given so more energy needed by a cell more atp molecules are given so these atp molecules are nothing but they are a kind of currency of energy so whatever energy is released they are stored as atp molecules so if we we talk in this term that eight atp molecules is given to this cell 10 atp molecules is given to this cell right so it is a kind of currency which behave as a storage of this energy so now you understand what is the process of respiration respiration is basically oxidation of the assimilated molecules so that their bond energy gets converted into released energy which can be utilized for various activities which take place inside the body so how is this energy stored this energy is stored in the form of adenosine triphosphate molecules so whenever a cell needs energy atp molecules are given to that cell whenever the energy requirement is more more number of atp molecules are given right okay so now let us see what is respiration let us try to define respiration so respiration has got two aspects one aspect is the oxidation of the assimilated molecules the other aspect is 
the way by which it obtains oxygen because we saw in the previous slide that for oxidation of that molecule oxygen was needed so how how to obtain that oxygen so that is to be obtained from outside so that gaseous exchange is another aspect of respiration so respiration is a life process which involves intake of oxygen from surroundings right now using that oxygen oxidation of food so the oxidation of the assimilated molecules using that oxygen itself release of energy so when the food is oxidized energy will be released elimination of carbon dioxide which is produced as a byproduct so as you saw the equation for um, for respiration we saw that carbon dioxide is an extra thing which is getting produced and we do not want to store those extra things so we have to eliminate carbon dioxide so what are the things which we deal with in respiration intake of oxygen removal of co2 and oxidation of food so all these things together constitutes the process of respiration right so what do we conclude we conclude that in this entire process gaseous exchange takes place how oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out so that means exchange of gases is taking place so exchange of gases is one aspect of respiration what is the other aspect of respiration the second aspect of respiration is oxidation of the assimilated food molecules so one aspect is exchange of gases and the second aspect is oxidation of food right now what happens in case of respiration oxygen is taken in now for, for let us take the example of human beings how do we take in oxygen with the help of our nostrils right so this oxygen enters through our nostrils and where does it go it basically reaches our lungs so these are our lungs so the oxygen will actually enter through the nostrils and it will finally reach the lungs right so from lungs the oxygen will then reach the blood and from blood it will reach all the cells so that is how oxygen is taken in right now how this transfer actually takes place that is how oxygen reaches from nostrils to lungs how it reaches from lungs to blood and how it reaches from blood to cells that is what we are going to study in the coming slides so for now i hope you understood what is the process of respiration now many people think that whenever we talk about respiration many people feel that respiration is all about taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide they sometimes ignore the second part of respiration which is very very important right so many people think that respiration is same as breathing there is no difference between respiration and breathing but it is not like that there is a big difference between respiration and breathing now when i talk about respiration respiration has got two different aspects one is internal respiration and the other one is external respiration so when i talk of internal respiration internally what is happening during the process of respiration oxidation so oxidation of food that is that comes under internal respiration because it is happening internally we are not able to see this and what comes under external respiration external respiration talks about exchange of gases because some that is something which is happening externally we can see people exchanging gases we can see that when we breathe in air we are actually taking in oxygen when we breathe out we are giving out carbon dioxide so that is external respiration because we can see the exchange of gases externally right so what exactly is the flow of respiration now from the environment fresh air is taken in now fresh air contains a lot of oxygen so oxygen enters into the body so where does this oxygen go it is taken through the nostrils and then it finally reaches the lungs of our body because lungs are the main organs of respiration so from lungs there it goes to the blood from blood they reach the cells finally 
right now the cells are the places where actually oxidation of food takes place i mean as we were talking about that oxidation of the assimilated molecules so that process actually takes place in the cells that is internal respiration takes place inside cells now when internal respiration takes place inside cells what will happen carbon dioxide will be produced in the cells so what will the cells do cells will throw out the carbon dioxide outside so these carbon dioxide will then go to the blood blood will carry this carbon dioxide back to the lungs the lungs will again throw these carbon dioxide through nostril when the person exhales so this carbon dioxide is finally exhaled through the nostrils so this is the entire process of respiration so we can see that respiration is not just about taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide it has something more to do so how do we differentiate between respiration and breathing respiration is a biochemical process whereas breathing is a physical process so breathing is all about that means taking in and giving out so that is all about breathing so we have nothing to do with there, there are no chemical equations involved there is no chemical reaction which is taking place during breathing so it is just a physical process where we breathe in and breathe out when i talk of respiration it is a biochemical process biochemical means some chemical reactions take place in different parts of the living organisms for example you saw the oxidation of food is taking place inside the body so some chemical reactions are actually happening so it is a biochemical process respiration is both extracellular and inter intracellular that means within the cell also certain things are happening for example oxidation of food takes place within the cell so that is intracellular but at the same time there are some extracellular things happening that is uh, the exchange of gases but breathing is all about extracellular it is just exchange of gases in respiration enzymes action involved because in respiration chemical equation is involved therefore enzyme actions are involved in breathing no enzymes involved respiration energy is released in breathing there is no energy released because when we say when we define respiration what do we say it is the process by which energy is released from the assimilated food molecules right but when i talk of breathing breathing is nothing it is just exchange of gases so in respiration the important thing is internal respiration but for that internal respiration to take place we need oxygen so that is why we have external respiration so respiration mainly talks about the fact that a lot of energy is released but in breathing there is no energy released in respiration all body cells are involved this uh, oxidation of food molecules this takes place in each and every cell of the body whereas in breathing only certain organs are involved because when we breathe in or breathe out it is only our nostrils and some other organs which are involved for breathing so we will talk about the organs or we will talk about the human respiratory system in detail then you will you will come to know what are the organs which are involved in breathing right so now you understand the difference between respiration and breathing breathing is just a physical process of exchange of gases but respiration is lot more beyond that it is an exchange of gases along with that there is oxidation of food which takes place inside each and every cell of the body and this oxidation releases a huge amount of energy thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again